The mystery painting is here. The picture became the collection of Museum of Modern Art in New York in 1939. The picture was drawn in 1907. It is said that Cubism started by this picture. It is an ugly picture. Many people were not able to understand what was drawn. Why did the painter draw it in this way? Why is the face of the person drawn as having put on a mask? The mystery is not yet solved. This picture seems to be an impregnable fortress. What do the people do? On earth who are they? Picasso oneself did not answer definitely. He did not show even a title. Many researchers gave various opinions. However, it is still a mystery why he drew in this way. Nobody was able to solve the mystery of this picture. Picasso he is ridiculing us. It is because we did not solve the mystery which he applied. Now, let's use the first key here. Now we should look at this point of the picture. The white clouds and the blue sky and the sun were drawn on here. Why was the sun drawn on the center of picture? This is the sun. The right eye of the person would be shining brightly following the light of the sun. The sky was drawn here. Isn't it abnormal thing? However, all researchers did not pay special attention to this. It has been hidden skillfully. Now you can watch a white cloud and the blue sky and sun. But why? There is the secret. Here is a new viewpoint of Picasso. Hereafter, let's solve this mystery by the method of profiling. At first we shall pay attention to a drawn mask. The current researcher thought that these were masks in Africa. However, why was a mask drawn on this picture? Picasso oneself did not answer definitely, too. Picasso answered it that this picture was his picture of the first exorcism. On earth what is the exorcism? We shall clarify it from now on. Here is the source of the mask. Thus spoke Zarathustra. Written by Friedrich Nietzsche 1885. This is the first code book which he used. Surprisingly, the code was disclosed. This was a public code. Okay, let's break his code. A lot of art historians have been pointing out the relation between this picture and thus spoke Zarathustra. However, Nobody concretely described what relation it was. It was necessary to pay attention to the words. Though no one was noticed, word mask was concealed and thus spoke Zarathustra. Zarathustra is a superman. When Zarathustra was thirty years old, he left his home and the lake of his home and went into the mountains. Here he had the enjoyment of his spirit and his solitude and he did not weary of it for ten years. But at last his heart turned and one morning he rose with the dawn, stepped before the sun, and spoke to it thus. Zarathustra said, Great star! What would your happiness be, if you had not those for whom you shine? Zarathustra explains. Man is a rope, fastened between animal and superman. A rope over an abyss. Zarathustra said, I want to teach men the meaning of their existence, which is the superman, the lightning from the dark cloud man. 
Zarathustra said. Behold, I teach you the Superman. He is this lightning, he is this madness. Zarathustra said. Behold, I am a prophet of the lightning and a heavy drop from the cloud. But this lightning is called Superman. The words of Nietzsche are difficult. High comprehension is necessary. To the first piece of paper of Thus Spoke Zarathustra, it was written as 6,000 feet beyond man and time. He wrote that man and time. Nietzsche oneself wrote it as a book for everyone and no one, as the subtitle of Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Nietzsche, he himself understood that this book was hard to be understood. However, there were one, an ardent understanding person here. It was Picasso. He was an extremely excellent reader. From now on, let's solve a mystery. By the first code book of him. When we understand that this picture expressed a scene in Nietzsche, all becomes clearly. When I noticed it, all mysteries were removed in an instant. Then what kind of scene is it? There is a chapter, named, Of the Way of the Creator, in Thus Spoke Zarathustra Part 1. Zarathustra orders the person who is going to become a creator. Zarathustra said, Solitary man, you will be a heretic to yourself and a witch and a prophet and an evil doer and a villain. You must be ready to burn yourself in your own flame. How could you become new, if you had not first become ashes? Solitary man, you are going the way of the creator. You want to create yourself a god from your seven devils. It was necessary for the person who was going to become a creator to create one god from seven devils. Seven devils. You already know that seven men or a woman were drawn on the early sketches. They were the devils. Seven devils. On earth, what is these devils? There is a scene on which the evil spirit of melancholy devils performs magic. In part four. Old sorcerer said, Already my evil spirit of deceit and sorcery attacks me, my melancholy devil who is an adversary of this Zarathustra from the very heart. Forgive him for it. Now he insists on working charms before you. Now he has his hour. I wrestle in vain with this evil spirit. It is a chapter the Song of Melancholy. Now devil has his hour. And here an old sorcerer talks about the devil and arrival of new god. Furthermore, Note that a mask appears into his talk. To all of you, like me, suffer from the great disgust, for whom the old god has died and as yet no new god lies in cradles and swaddling clothes. To all of you is my evil spirit and sorcery devil well disposed. The great disgust is the pains that resembled morning sickness before the birth. Here, old God expresses old art, and new God expresses new art. It was the same as Picasso's idea which destroys old art and establishes new art. And the old sorcerer said, I know you, I are men, I know him, I also know this demon whom I love despite myself, the Zarathustra. He himself often seems to me like the beautiful mask of a saint, like a strange, new masquerade in which my evil spirit, 
The melancholy devil takes pleasure. The demon. The beautiful mask of a saint. A strange new masquerade. The melancholy devil. Now, we found mask. This was the reason why a mask must be drawn on this picture. Now, we break Picasso's first code. And we should return to part two once. There was explanation of the man who sat down there. Of manly prudence at part two. Zarathustra. He spoke his appearance here. Zarathustra said, A horror overcame me. When I saw these best men naked, then there grew for me the wings to soar away into distant futures, into most distant futures, into more southerly souths than artist ever dreamed of, thither where gods are ashamed of all clothes. But I want to see you disguised, you neighbors and fellow men, and I myself will sit among you disguised. Thus spoke Zarathustra. The man sitting left side was Picasso disguised. Then what was the theme of the picture? We can find it in the words of an old sorcerer. The old sorcerer said, I love Zarathustra, so I often think, for the sake of my evil spirit. But already he is attacking me and compelling me. The spirit of melancholy, this evening twilight devil, and truly, you hire men, he has a desire. Just open your eyes. He has a desire to come naked, whether as man or woman I do not yet know. But he is coming, he is compelling me, alas. Open your senses. Day is fading away, now evening is coming to all thing even to the best things, listen now, and see, you hire men, what devil, whether man or woman, this spirit of evening melancholy is. They were the spirit of evening melancholy. They came with the masks. It was a scene of a strange, new masquerade. Picasso talked to Malroll later. I understood why I was a painter, all alone in that awful museum, with masks, dolls made by the redskins, dusty mannequins. Les Demoiselles Davinon must have come to me that very day, but not at all because of the forms, because it was my first exorcism painting, yes, absolutely. He said it was my first exorcism painting. It was right by half. Be careful. He said but not at all because of the forms here. This was correct. Forms were coming from other place. I perform the explanation in the another chapter. It was necessary for the person who was going to become a creator to create one god from seven devils. It was seven devils drawn on the picture. This was a strange masquerade. There were the spirit of evening melancholy devils. The devils naked, man or woman. Which wore masks and some of them dancing like a flamenco dancer there. This is the first mystery solution. Zarathustra said, Go apart and be alone with your love and your creating, my brother, and justice will be slow to limp after you. However, now we only solved a part of mystery. Seven Evil. Mask and Masquerade. The Magic of Devil. Zarathustra. In the following chapter, we break his code and investigate the purpose of the picture. Then, 
we will discover the reason why the sun was drawn on the center. Zarathustra said, I carried keys, the rustiest of all keys, and I could open with them, the most creaking of all doors. When the wings of this door were opened, the sound ran through the long corridors, like an evil croaking. This bird cried out ill-temperedly. It did not want to be awakened. However, we must break his code. At first the mask is painted in strange colors. This is what? We can find the key, in part two, of the land of culture. Zarathustra said. My I had never seen anything so modly spotted. Here must be the home of all the paint pots, I said. Painted with fifty blotches on face and limbs, thus you sat there to my astonishment, you men of the present. Truly, you could wear no better masks than your own faces, you men of the present. Who could recognize you? Written over with the signs of the past and these signs overdaubed with new signs, thus you have hidden yourselves well from all interpreters of signs. Painted with fifty blotches on face and limbs, these strange colors, which cannot be understood with the usual feeling, deepen the mystery further. Once again, let's see the face of the person of this screen left in detail. This person's depiction differs from others clearly. Eyes were not drawn on the iPad. Eyes are perfectly drawn by other persons. However, only this person, eyes are not drawn. Has the painter forgotten to draw eyes? The white portion was left behind to the right eye. Therefore, it is thought that the left eye was applied black in the last stage. And a person's face seems to have been applied white at the very end. Possibly a painter tried to draw a skull here, at the very end. Let's see the original sketches here. In these sketches, depiction was usual and was not a skull. Part 2 of the Land of Culture had an answer after all. Here, it is the scene which Zarathustra is surprised and escapes. Such depiction is uniquely only here. Zarathustra said, he who tore away from me your veils and wraps and paint and gestures would have just enough left over to frighten the birds. Truly, I myself am the frightened bird who once saw you naked and without paint, and I flew away when the skeleton made advances to me. Nietzsche wrote, the skeleton made advances to me. Possibly the white portion of the right I showed this. Zarathustra said, I would rather be a day laborer in the underworld and among the shades of the bygone. Even the inhabitants of the underworld are fatter and fuller than you. This, yes this is bitterness to my stomach, that I can endure you, neither naked nor clothed, you, men of the present. This person's face was applied white in the meaning of the skeleton and the eye pit was applied black in the last stage. Possibly the skull which disappeared once by the early sketch revived here. And these human bodies are applied to the flat. Because, they had to be scarecrows. 
However, why did he need to hide it? This answer existed and thus spoke Zarathustra, too. Zarathustra said, Have a healthy mistrust today, you higher men, you stout-hearted, open-hearted men, and keep your reason secret. Nietzsche wrote, You are treating your path of greatness. Now it must call up all your courage that there is no longer a path behind you. You are treating your path of greatness. No one shall steal after you here. Your foot itself has extinguished the path behind you, and above that path stands written, Impossibility. The face was colored in order to hide his intention skillfully. Picasso hide it really. Well from all interpreters of signs. He was ordered to erase the path that he had passed. In fact, for 100 years, nobody was able to understand it. He succeeded in erasing his path. Zarathustra was explaining it by the metaphor. God's woe is deeper, you strange world. Reach out for God's woe, nor for me. What am I? An intoxicated, sweet liar. A midnight liar, a croaking bell. Which no one understands but which has to speak before deaf people, you higher men. For you do not understand me. Sweet liar. Sweet liar. Your sound, your intoxicated ominous sound, delights me. This picture was a croaking bell which no one understands. It was not beautiful music. It was the picture which no one could understand it. Then, for what purpose was this picture drawn? Nietzsche explains a position of thus spoke Zarathustra. Nietzsche wrote, What defines me? What sets me apart from the whole rest of humanity is that I uncovered Christian morality. That is why I needed a word that had the meaning of a provocation for everybody. A word that had the meaning of a provocation for everybody. This was the meaning of this picture. This picture was not a picture expressing the beauty. Nietzsche wrote, for behold, O Zarathustra, new lyres are needed for your new songs. Sing and bubble over, O Zarathustra, heal your soul with new songs, so that you may bear your great destiny. That was never yet the destiny of any man. It was Picasso's mission to draw a new picture. Picasso heard, O Picasso, heal your soul with new songs so that you may bear your great destiny, that was never yet the destiny of any man. Nietzsche wrote, You are treating your path of greatness. Now it must call up all your courage that there is no longer a path behind you. You are treating your path of greatness. No one shall steal after you here. Your foot itself has extinguished the path behind you, and above that path stands written, Impossibility. He Picasso received in order to challenge impossibility to become great. Zarathustra said, All great things occur away from glory and the marketplace. The inventors of new values have always lived away from glory and the marketplace. It was right Picasso himself. He had to become the inventor of new values. He was a man brainwashed by Nietzsche. What was he going to copy? Zarathustra ordered him. Destroy everything. Zarathustra strongly explains a grand way up to the creator by beautiful words. He ordered. You surpass oneself, and challenge it. And become a superman. Therefore, change yourselves first.
Zarathustra said. And your own reason. You shall yourself choke and throttle. For it is the reason of this world. Thus you shall yourself learn to renounce the world. Shatter. O oh my brothers, shatter these ancient law tables of the pious. Shatter by your teachings the sayings of the world calumniators. Picasso, he was the faithful apprentice of Nietzsche. This book completely brainwashed a coward boy and brought up him into a valiant challenger. He who believed the teaching of Nietzsche blindly became the most radical person at that time. And, by the teaching of Nietzsche, he had to destroy the rule of a traditional painting. The words of Nietzsche still rage and continue ordering. Zarathustra said, And he who has to be a creator in good and evil, truly, has first to be a destroyer and break values. Thus the greatest evil belongs with the greatest good, this, however, is the creative good. And let everything that can break upon our truths break. There is many a house still to build. And let everything that can break upon our truths break. There is many a house still to build. Zarathustra said, A change of value that means a change in the creators of values. He who has to be a creator always has to destroy. This is called destruction and creation. Later, Zarathustra said, To lure many away from the herd, that is why I have come. The people in the herd shall be angry with me. The herdsmen shall call Zarathustra a robber. Behold the good and the just. Whom do they hate most? Him who smashes their tables of values, the breaker, the lawbreaker. But he is the creator. Nietzsche let the shadow talk. Shadow said, I have striven with you, into all that was forbidden, worst, most remote, and if anything in me be a virtue, it is that. I have feared no prohibition. I have broken up with you, whatever my heart revered. I have overthrown boundary stones and statues. I have pursued the most dangerous desires. Truly, I once went beyond every crime. I haven't learned with you belief in words and values and the great names. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. Thus I told myself. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. Thus I told myself. Zarathustra said. Man must grow better and move evil. Thus I teach. The most evil is necessary for the superman's best. Zarathustra said. But I whisper this advice in the ear of him. Pist of a devil. Better for you. To rear your devil. There is a way to greatness even for you. The text of Nietzsche is extremely agitating. However, it is really beautiful. The theme was destruction and fear. Picasso was not afraid that he was laughed at by people. Rather he guided people to be so. Because he was a performer of Nietzsche, and it was the stage where he played Zarathustra. Nietzsche wrote, When Zarathustra had spoken these words he looked again at the people and fell silent. There they stand. He said to his heart, there. They laugh, they do not understand me. I am not the mouth for these ears. Must one first shatter their ears to teach them to hear with their eyes? Must one rumble like drums and Lenten preachers? Or do they believe only those who stammer? It was necessary for Picasso to play this scene. On the scene. He had to draw a strange picture that nobody accepts, and he had to teach it to people. He just imitated what was written. He was the performer, an actor of Nietzsche.
here, two parts which constitute the last scene of part four were embedded. The man who is sitting down on the screen left shows. The scene which Zarathustra sits down on a stone and considers once again, at the last of part four. In the front chapter, we presume that this person was Zarathustra disguised and was Picasso disguised. This person's mask is applied by the color different from the body. It will be convinced if we read the last of part four. Nietzsche wrote, and once more Zarathustra became absorbed in himself and sat himself again on the great stone and meditated. Suddenly, he leaped up. He cried out, and his countenance was transformed into brass. Very well. That has had its time. The man who sits on the left of our picture is Picasso disguised. And the face was just transformed into brass. This is a face which Zarathustra has realized. Picasso has had its time. Zarathustra said, My suffering and my pity what of them? For do I aspire after happiness? I aspire after my work. Very well. The lion has come, my children are near. Zarathustra has become ripe, my hour has come. This is my morning, my day begins, rise up now, rise up, great noontide. This is the sentence of the most last chapter of Thus Spoke Zarathustra Part 4. The painter needed to call to the sun at the time of his start. Since Zarathustra did so, it was natural. It was just the reason the sun was drawn on the center of a picture. The name of the chapter is Sign. He did the last signature by drawing the sun. He had to make something, and it was not the usual thing. When it is very new, people are surprised, are frightened and they should feel nauseated. This nuance was hidden in the backside of this picture. Picasso performed them faithfully. He was the enthusiastic Nietzsche believer, and was Nietzsche's pupil. He tried to perform Zarathustra as Nietzsche's script. Picasso drew this picture as a song for challenges. People suffer from feeling like vomiting. He wanted to overturn a table of the value of people. He wanted to move the boundary stones. Zarathustra said, And only now does the great terror, the great prospect, the great sickness, the great disgust, the great seasickness come to it. Nietzsche wrote, What defines me, what sets me apart from the whole rest of humanity is that I uncovered Christian morality. That is why I needed a word that had the meaning of a provocation for everybody. Nietzsche wrote, For behold, O Zarathustra, New lyres are needed for your new songs. Sing and bubble over, O Zarathustra, heal your soul with new songs, so that you may bear your great destiny. That was never yet the destiny of any man. Zarathustra said, And he who has to be a creator in good and evil, truly, has first to be a destroyer and break values. Thus the greatest evil belongs with the greatest good, this, however, is the creative good. And let everything that can break upon our truths break. There is many a house still to build.
The shadow said. I have broken up with you, whatever my heart revered. I have overthrown boundary stones and statues. I have pursued the most dangerous desires. Truly, I once went beyond every crime. I haven't learned with you belief in words and values and the great names. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. Thus I told myself. Zarathustra said. And your own reason. You shall yourself choke and throttle. For it is the reason of this world. Thus you shall yourself learn to renounce the world. Shatter. O oh my brothers, shatter these ancient law tables of the pious. Shatter by your teachings the sayings of the world calumniators. Zarathustra said. To lure many away from the herd that is why I have come. The people in the herd shall be angry with me. The herdsmen shall call Zarathustra a robber. Behold the good and the just. Whom do they hate most? Him who smashes their tables of values, the breaker, the lawbreaker. But he is the creator. Zarathustra said, And only now does the great terror, the great prospect, the great sickness, the great disgust, the great seasickness come to it. Zarathustra was explaining it by the metaphor. God's woe is deeper, you strange world. Reach out for God's woe, nor for me. What am I? An intoxicated, sweet liar. A midnight liar, a croaking bell. Which no one understands but which has to speak before deaf people, you higher men. For you do not understand me. Sweet liar. Sweet liar. Your sound... Your intoxicated ominous sound delights me. Truly, my happiness and my freedom come like a storm. But my enemies shall think the evil one is raging over their heads. Yes, you too, my friends, will be terrified by my wild wisdom, and perhaps you will flee from it together with my enemies. To all of you, like me, suffer from the great disgust, for whom the old god has died and as yet no new god lies in cradles and swaddling clothes. To all of you is my evil spirit and sorcery devil well disposed. I love Zarathustra, so I often think, for the sake of my evil spirit. But already he is attacking me and compelling me, this spirit of melancholy. This evening twilight devil, and truly, you higher men, he has a desire. Just open your eyes. He has a desire to come naked, whether as man or woman I do not yet know. But he is coming, he is compelling me, alas. Open your senses. Day is fading away. Now evening is coming to all things even to the best things, listen now, and see, you higher men, what devil, whether man or woman, this spirit of evening melancholy is. This picture was a word, that had the meaning of a provocation for everybody. Zarathustra said, only since he has lain in the grave, have you again been resurrected? Only now does the great noontide come, only now does the higher man become lord and master. Zarathustra said, My suffering and my pity what of them? For do I aspire after happiness? I aspire after my work. Very well. The lion has come, my children are near, Zarathustra has become ripe, my hour has come. This is my morning, my day begins, rise up now, rise up, great noontide. A word that had the meaning of a provocation for everybody. This is the meaning of this picture. Great noontide. 
This was the reason why there was the sun in the center of the picture. He, the painter had to call the sun. And he must wait. Nietzsche wrote, Solitary man, you will be a heretic to yourself and a witch and a prophet and an evil doer and a villain. Solitary man, you are going the way of the creator. You want to create yourself a god. From your seven devils. Go apart and be alone. With your love and your creating. My brother, and justice will be slow to limp after you. This is the first layer that he Picasso just played. It is the first curtain. And there is another curtain by progress at the same time. It is the second hidden curtain, the second layer. And Nietzsche had left one serious prophecy. It was told by Zarathustra. Zarathustra said, For, that the Superman may not lack his dragon, the super dragon worthy of him. Much hot sunshine must yet burn upon damp primeval forests. In order for Picasso to become a superman, he had to fight against the super dragon. He needed the scene on which he fights against a super dragon. And he smashes a super dragon. In order to smash a super dragon, he, Picasso prepared many secret weapons. Let's see the secret weapons what he prepared in the following chapter. Thus spoke Zarathustra was an incentive of this picture. But it is not enough. In order to understand this picture, another hidden book is required. There are one more secret. Another key and the code book are required here. In the following chapter, let's see the second hidden code book. In the second code book, we will discover the roots of the theory of cubism. It was just the second curtain that Picasso performed. Please watch what following in numerical order. Next is Part 2 Cubism from Balzac.